Hi guys! I thought I wasn't going to be able to get a tutorial done this week because my pasta machine broke so I ordered a new one and I was expecting it not to arrive until sometime next week but I got it today so I'm all excited. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick one today, fairly quick one anyway and really quite a simple thing. Um, so what I've got here is some Primo white translucent clay and I've rolled a four equal-ish strips out so I've just got a block of clay and cut them into four and rolled it out and they're all rolled out onto a number six on my Atlas 150, zero being the thickest setting so it's actually quite thin and you will also need a very thin piece of um, Primo Pearl and this is rolled onto a number seven but that's for down the road so I'll just put that there. I also got some really cool new cutters from Ojoy Creations so there's a, this little set which I'll probably use this today. Um, it will be in the Clay Boutique custom made cutter section on her website. I'll leave a link in the description and I also got these ones as well so I'll probably use some of those and they're all in different sizes and she's also done the mirror image for the earrings that's that one sorry <clears throat> and then there's also these ones that I might use but you'll see what I'm using as I actually use them but again Ojoy oh Creations I will list her in my description and I will also list Debbie from Australia because she also um, sells a lot of the same cutters as Joy so if it's easier and more convenient for you to order from Australia then there's that option as well but Joy is based in um, USA as am I and I'm also going to be using some of Ojo Creations um, Makume Gane imprints. So that's those. For the actual technique part, you're going to need um, a different section of selection of colours of mica powder. Now I've got this Stardust uh, mica, which is just a pearl colour. That's listed in my storefront, Amazon storefront which I'll leave a link for that as well. And then I've just got a variety of different colours of mica powders. Any mica powder will do. I've got a pink, I've got a violet, I've got a pinkish purple, a dark green and medium blue. And I'm also using this holographic lavender extra fine glitter. Again, there's a whole set of these. And I will list, I've already listed them in my Amazon storefront. So they're what you're going to need today. Oh, and some translucent liquid clay as well. And I think that's everything other than the tools and wet wipes and all the usual stuff. So I've got four strips of this translucent clay. And I'm going to put colour on just two of them. So we'll start with this one. And I'm just going to take each of the mica powders and just you know dot it all around like this you don't even have to blend it in you can just kind of dot it around like this same on the other piece and you can use any colours you don't have to use these ones so I'm just dotting that colour around next one Boop, 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 Very simple. I just thought I'd get a quick one out today. Just because I haven't done one for a week. And I was excited to get my pasta machine, so I wanted to use it. So I thought, why not do a tutorial while I'm at it? <laughs> oh, that was the um, pearl, by the way, the white pearl. Um, then the green one. Just boop it all around. Then we've got this um, pink one as well. Just 
like so. And then the last one is the blue. <sighs> Just get some of that off my hand. The blue one. Now, obviously, as we work with this, these colours are going to get somewhat blended. But the... Um, result of this I just think it looks so cool it's technically a Makume Gane um, but using mica powders all right so they're the two sheets have got the that have got the uh, mica powders on them um, now the thing is if I was to put this translucent straight on top of that it's going to have a very hard time sticking to the mica powder it does eventually come together but I think it's just easier just to add a little smear of the liquid translucent clay to help stick the clay together so I'm just going to smear some of that on you don't need a great deal and you know make sure it is translucent as well so this is just kind of acting like a bit of a glue I'm going to take this and just pop it on top of the coloured sheet like so. Give it a gentle press. And then I'm going to get that lovely lavender holographic glitter and just give a little bit of a sprinkle. I don't want a great deal of glitter in this, but it's just to give it a little bit of extra sparkle. And then you can just kind of rub it in with your fingers. And just to be sure, I am going to add another little layer of the liquid clay. Just rub that over. And I'm going to take the other coloured sheet. Let me just... This is a bit awkward. Let me just move this over a little bit. I'm going to take this other sheet of coloured clay and pop that on there, face up. The colours are facing upwards. I'm going to get a wet wipe. And we're going to get the last piece of the translucent. Again give it another light smear of the liquid translucent clay. Oops. Give it a rub over. Don't worry if the clay breaks. It's, it's all going to come together. I mean I'm not too bothered about getting perfect strips to start with um, because it all comes together. So I'm just rubbing that over there. Same thing. I'm going to lift it up, put it on top, give it a little smush. I'm not going to put any more glitter in, I just like a little bit of sparkle on one of the layers. Give my hands a wipe. Give my desk a wipe. I dry my hands off. And I'm just, hopefully this is not going to smoosh around too much. I'm just going to give this a quick roll. Just want to make sure it's going to stick. And like I say, even without the liquid clay, it, <coughs> it does eventually stick. It just takes um, extra effort to work it. Anyway, I'm going to cut the stack in half and restack. I'm just going to try and mush it together. It's still going to be a little bit resistant, guys, because of the mica powders, but it, it will come together. You just have to keep working with it, and that liquid clay does help. So, you know, I'm not being particularly gentle with it. I'm just giving it a nice squish and a squash here and there. Just want to make sure it all comes together. Get those raggedy edges a little bit neater as well. 
I'm going to see if I can roll this a little bit now, just to see. And this is where the colours start to get a bit more mushed together. So I've rolled it and stacked it one time, and I'm going to cut it and restack again. Like so. Now, I could cut and restack again, and I'm thinking whether I should or not. In the first batch I did, I rolled it and stacked it three times, and it gave a very muted but gorgeous look. But I'm wondering whether to just leave it not so muted, so more of that colour actually pops through, because I have got to roll it again. So, so I would suggest if you wanted more of the colours, different colours, you know, to be more distinct from each other, just roll it a couple, roll it and stack it a couple of times. If you want the colours to be a little bit more blended, um, just do two times. And I think I'm going to leave it at two times, and then I will just show you the one that I originally did, where the colours are more muted. But it it does look kind of cool, I must admit. So I'm just going to keep playing with this until I know it's really firmly stuck together see there's still little little pieces here and there that don't want to stick so I'm just going to keep playing with it there's probably no liquid clay on that bit okay so once you're happy with that I'm going to roll it out a little bit thinner. I want to accommodate um, at least three of the MG imprints, the Makume Gani imprints. You know what I forgot, don't you guys? I forgot to roll out some backing for this. But I can go and do that in a minute. It's no biggie. Right, so I'm just going to keep rolling this out. Um, to the thickness, roughly to the thickness of um, the cutter part of the imprint, which is round about now, I would think. I'm just going to see if I can actually get three on there, though. I'm not going to be able to get three on there. So I am going to roll it a little bit thinner. accommodate three now it probably will because obviously this is wider than this so I think that's good so you don't want too thick of a stack because these MG imprints don't cut that that deep as if you were to use like you know a ball tool or something to make your pattern right so once you've rolled that out then you just need to grab that um, pearl clay that I told you about and this is rolled onto a number seven nine being the thinnest setting so this is fairly thin and just pop that over there. Now you don't have to use the pearl white, you could use a different colour, but I do recommend you use a pearlescent colour. And Primo have quite a few of those, like the peacock blue and um, gold. Just something with the with mica powder in it, because we want that shine. That pearlescent look. I'm just going to give this another quick roll just to make sure it's on there. Push that air bubble out. I really want it to be stuck to the tile. And I think we're good. So just, you know, play with your clay, make sure it's all nicely stuck together. This, this bit keeps lifting. Hopefully it won't do that when I put my imprints in. All right, so it's as simple as that, guys. And now I'm just going to take these imprints and I'm going to push through. Give it a little wiggle. Just 
gently lift it out and this one stuck a little bit this one stuck a lot not going to worry about it I'm not going to be able to get that out without getting something to stick in there I should have probably wetted it a little bit more but I'm not going to worry about that it's still it will still be fine I'm going to get this one which I really love this one like a little seashell kind of shape just push that in like so and then this lovely flower one just put that on there and give it another push there we go so unfortunately that one did come out but it's, it's still going to be okay fingers crossed anyway Right, and then I'm going to get my roller and I'm just going to close all of that back up. And I think that's why it came up, because this bit here is refusing to stick. So it just kind of pulled up. This one's been really bad. I'm going to try and rectify that and add a little bit of um, liquid clay there, just to help it stick, because it's been naughty. Okay, and I think this side maybe needs a little bit too. There's always ways to fix things, guys. Don't panic. And even if it didn't work out, you've only lost a little section. It will still be fine. All right, so I'm going to continue to roll this because I want these closed back up. Oh, this bit's doing my head in. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep your roller rolling. Right. I'm not going to worry about that bit anymore. I'm just going to crack on with now cutting into this stack. And actually what I'm going to do with the, the remainder of the stack, I'm just going to put that through the machine. Wait a minute. What am I doing? How do I want to do? I'm going to try and do it as one long strip but I know this bit here is going to give me trouble so I'm just going to try and slice through as best I can just give that blade a little wiggle as you work your way under because I want a fairly thin piece and ta-da I just love this it's so pretty I'm just gonna whoops I'm just gonna take this edge off here because that's a bit thick and we've still got a few little pieces we can play with now this is quite thin so I want to be careful with that and here's tipsy I know did you miss everybody oh that looks pretty I'm just gonna level this bit off as well. I'm going to try and get a full flower from it though so I can still use it. It just looks so pretty and delicate. So in a nutshell this is Makume Gane using Makume Gane imprints and glitter and mica powder but I tell you what I love it and wait till you see. I'm going to get rid of that because that's kind of didn't come out that great and I'm just going to use that to roll into a back in now I'm thinking should I just leave this as is and just cut into it or do you think I can get another oh I'm going to try and get another flower from it so I'm going to go fairly thin yeah and we're getting to the bottom now where it didn't really imprint but we've got a really cool flower there so, I'm just going to get rid of that. And I'll tell you what else you could do. You could just chop this up and do a chippy choppy with it because it's a lot of translucency in there. I'm just going to take, I'm scared to do this in case I ruin it. I'm just going to take a little bit off. There we go, that's better. That's a pretty nice piece, even though it is just a little tiny piece. 
and you can see some of that white pearl that you put in on the top is impressed in and left like a little outline um, which is what I wanted to achieve and I think I'm going to leave this as is because if I cut any more I might lose it so I'm leaving that as is I'm going to roll these up into my backing sheet or you could just place it on translucent clay whichever you prefer so I've got a few nice pieces there so I'm just going to go and roll this out in my pasta machine to make a backing and I'll be back. I've rolled a piece of clay out, I just mixed all the leftover from that and it's given this lovely lavenderish colour which I think is going to look really nice with these pieces but I'm just going to work on this one that I left relatively thick and this can just be a pendant all on its own I think but now I'm not sure you know do you know what? I'm going to see if I can get another thin slice from it. I just love this shape and I'm just hoping it's going to work. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's usable, but now this isn't, so I probably should have just left it. Oh well. Oops. <laughs> We've still got a lovely piece there. Right. So I've got my backing sheet and I've rolled this onto a number two. You can roll it to whatever thickness you want. I just don't like to make my pieces too thick, especially um, if they're going to be resined. Although having said that, I'm probably not going to resin these. So I'm talking, I'm talking crack. <laughs> right, let's get some of these babies on here. Just a simple technique, but using mica powders just gives it I think it just gives it a magical look, personally. I just love it. And I love the imprints as well. Let's just slap a few little pieces on there for now. And we'll work with this later. So I'm just going to gently roll this on there like that. It's picking a few little pieces up as we go. So I'm just gently rolling that on there and I didn't grab any paper did I? Nope I didn't. Just gonna grab some paper. Grab some paper for burnishing gonna lift this up I might as well just add this other piece on there actually and I think this is just too fragile for me to play with so I'm just gonna bung that over there but I think I might as well just add this I'll just give it a quick roll just to stick it on there lift this up on there. Okay. We need to give this another quick roll just to smooth it out a bit. And I'm going to grab my steel soap. Another thing I forgot. give this a really good burnish oops I just got a notification I was just moving that off the screen okay righty ho I think that's just feel with your fingers to make sure the slice of makume is nice and blended and flush on on the base on the backing it's always a good idea to get things as smooth as you can pre-bake it saves on uh, sanding afterwards although I'm going to sand these pieces so 
but I still like to make sure it's nice and smooth on there. I'm just going to take this off the backing paper because otherwise my cutter might not cut through all the way. I don't know whether you notice but you do get a, quite a few little bits and pieces falling off this because of how thin it is when you cut it. But anyway, that's that. So let me find a cutter that I think will look good. So, hmm, do I want to leave some purple on? Let me think. I really like this cutter. I think I'm going to go... Oh, I don't know, guys. Yeah, I think I'm going to go like that, a bit of an angle, and then drop it. Right. Before I do that, I'm just going to roll this back on the tile. Just to make it stick. So I'll try and get it back where it was before. Like so. And give it a push. Oops. I feel like everything's going wrong today. I feel like a bit of a klutz. Right. Okay, so that's one piece. Pretty. So I'm going to pop that on a piece of paper and I'm going to go and bake that on the paper because people do ask what I bake on. Well, I put it on paper because that's what I'm going to bake it on, uh, on top of a tray, a cookie sheet or whatever you want to call them. So there's that one. Now, hmm, I'm wondering whether to use different shapes. I love these shapes, but... Let me just see what this one looks Oh my gosh, I keep dropping things. What is wrong with me today? Um, but I do love these shapes, don't get me wrong. But I think I want to go with one of those lovely heart ones that Oh Joy gave me. I just I just love it so much. It's my, my favourite cutter at the moment. Although that keeps changing because every time I get new ones, I'm like, whoo. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with one of these hearts instead. And Tipsy is bugging me. She keeps crying. Just make sure that's stuck back down before I go ahead and cut. And I'm just going to pop that. Yes, see, I like that. I really like that. So I'm going to do that one instead. Yes, that works really nice for that. And for this one, um, hmm, let me see what this one does look like on there. I don't know. No, that's not working for me. I think I'm just going to grab a round one for this. I think. don't know about that either. Maybe a smaller round cutter might look better. It's difficult to see with the camera in front of me where it actually, where it's actually placed without me standing up and looking. So I'm just going to do that I think. I think this um, shell looks really nice on round so so there's those two. Oh, I love this one. Yes. Put that there on my paper. Gently lift this one. Put that on my paper. So that's three pendants. And we've got this piece left. So do you know what I've decided I'm going to do, guys? I'm actually quickly going to make a bangle. I 
didn't know whether I was going to or not because I didn't know whether I'd have enough left. But I haven't used this, so I am going to do a bangle because that is gorgeous. So what I'm going to do is go and roll out some more clay. And the reason I want to do a bangle is because Joy also sent me these bangle cutters. They are so cool. Now, they're not her design, but they are in her shop. Um, Debbie, the lady from Australia, whose link I will also leave, actually designed these. So she's got them in her shop too. And I just absolutely love them. I've not actually used one yet though, so we'll see. But I'm just going to go and roll out a piece of backing clay and I'll be back. I've rolled out a um, backing sheet and I'm using this bangle form. Now, I have looked in Amazon where I got this and I couldn't find one exactly the same. But I have linked another one, which I also do have somewhere, but I can't find it. So I'm just going to show you on this one today. But there is um, a bangle form linked in my Amazon storefront. All right, so I'm going to gently lift this up and pop it on my backing sheet like so and obviously this needs a good roll and a good burnish and same thing it's picking up little pieces of that overly micered clay but it's good it's all good right I'm losing my patience with that bit <laughs> oh dear. I need some more paper guys I hope my butt didn't go into view on the camera then <laughs> bending over oh dear we'll find out won't we <laughs> right where did my scissors go oh my gosh where did my scissors go I can't find them there they are I don't know sometimes guys I just feel totally um, not with it a little bit discombobulated. <laughs> Today's one of those days. But it's still looking good, so not worried. Right. Just give this another little roll. Grab some more paper just to burnish it nicely. Make sure it's really flush on that backing clay. Blended as I like to call it. I don't mean skin a blend when I say that. I mean blended on, blended flush onto the clay. This is a good arm exercise. Speaking of which, I went on my rebounder for the first time since um, I had COVID because I just couldn't get my energy back after that. But I went on it today, about killed me. <laughs> when you've not done it for a while, it's it takes a while to work back up into it. And oh my gosh, it was hard work and I only managed to do 10 minutes as well, which is okay. I mean, it's still a pretty good workout, but... Um, I've just got to work, build my way back up. Okay, so there's that. I'm just checking that it's nice and smooth before I place it on my bangle. F well, before I cut it out and place it on my bangle form. Just another little rub, rub a dub dub. Okay, I think that's good. I'm just going to put it back on here. Give it 
give it a roll onto the tile. Speaking of tiles, quite a lot of people ask me um, where I get this tile from, and it's a 12 by 24 inch ceramic tile, and I just I just got it from Home Depot. It was like three or four dollars. It wasn't expensive, but it's nice and smooth and easy to clean. So I'm just putting that out there for people who have asked and who are wondering. Now this is getting, you know, obviously thinner as I roll it, but I probably will be adding a, another back into this. I'm not going to do all that on camera guys, but I will show you the end result. Um, I do have a couple more bangle tutorials, so you can always go and look at those as well. But just for the purpose of this video, I'm going to cut this out. And it's going to take quite a lot of that lovely pattern away though, isn't it? Hmm. Let's see what this one looks like. Again, that's going to cut quite a bit away. I didn't really think this through, did I? I think this one's probably going to be the better one. But it's not going to get all of the pattern, but it's going to get little glimpses of it. We've still got this nice spirally seashell in the middle. So I think that still looks nice. Or you could just place it straight onto this if you want to maintain all of that, you know, pattern. But I'm going to try this one. See what it looks like. And now I've lost my block. And I'm just going to push this through. Sorry for the wobbly camera. When I wobble my desk, the camera wobbles at the same time because it's attached to the shelf just above my desk. I just really want to make sure that's cut all the way through. I'm scared to lift it in case it hasn't. Because like I say, I've not even used one of these yet. Yeah, looks like it's gone all the way through. So I'm just going to tear that off. So I ended up using most of the clay. There's hardly any wastage actually, which is a good thing. There we go. Ooh. I gotta say, I'm loving that. That's gorgeous. Right, now I've lost my bangle form. There it is. <laughs> So I'm gently going to lift this and like I say, once it's baked, I am going to put another piece of backing clay underneath and bake it again, just for it to be, you know, extra, a little extra thickness to it. And I've got to try and centre this. Whoops, so I'm just going to put that there. See, that's a perfect fit. It goes all the way to each edge, which is really cool. No faffing around cutting and trimming away edges anymore, guys. And that is gorgeous. I, I personally really like it. So I don't think I've got it very straight, though. I'm just going to straighten it out a bit. Don't worry about these bits hanging over. It will bake. It will still bake that way. And I'm not going to worry too much about the edges because there are a few little rough bits on there. I'm just because I'm going to sand it afterwards anyway. So that's the bangle. Wait till it comes out of the oven and you'll see what I mean. Um, and I will put another backing on it, like I said. All right, guys. So Mikume Gane using glitter and mica powders for that real subtle, beautiful look. I'm going to go and bake these and I'll be back. All right, guys, I finished the pieces. I sanded and buffed, resined and glittered the backs. And then the round one, I just did a simple pinch bell and a cord. These cords can be found in my Amazon storefront as well as the pinch bales. Everything linked in the description. So there's the round one. So shiny and so smooth. That's just a simple one. Um, and then the heart one that I did, I added a pinch bail, a tiny length of chain if I can unravel it, so just 
a little bit of chain. Let me just try and find the end where I did that. Okay, so you can see I just added a little bit of chain, added a turquoise bead and then continued with the length of the chain and the same on this side. I added more beads obviously, just join them together with jump rings and then continue on with another length of chain and then the toggle clasp. So that's the heart one and that looks so delicate and pretty and I really like the beads on that one. Just dresses it up a little bit I think. So there's that one, again resined and glittered on the back. And then here's the bracelet and this is probably one of the easiest bracelets I've made because there's a lot less faffing with cutting and everything. Obviously you do need to trim away um, when you add the bottom layer but I will leave a link in the description for another bangle that I made where I show you how I do the bottom bit as well. Alright, so everything will be linked in the description of everything that you need, how I finish my pieces, what grits I use to sand, etc. and how I do the bottom part of the bangle. So there's that, but I just wanted to, sh there was another piece that I did, but do you know what, I can't find it, I've looked everywhere, I don't know what I did with it, it was the kind of ovalish shape one that I did. I can't find it but you'll see through the video what it what it was and then I wanted to show you as well what what happens if you do the exact same technique but you stack cut and stack several times rather than just twice like I did with these and the colors just get more and more blended and more muted together but do you know what I absolutely love this look it does look more silvery now everything's blended together but if you catch it in a certain light you can pick up so you can see a little bit of purple there kind of showing through a little bit of the green but that's a more muted way of doing it so all you're going to do is stack roll and stack more than twice until the colors get more blended and then you're going to get more of this kind of look and again I just added a pinch bail a chain and the toggle clasp and all those things will be listed in my Amazon storefront so that's all for today guys thank you for watching and I'll catch you later bye